stress and anxiety just seem to be a part of our life. But as we know that if we internalize things and we never have that release valve, it can manifest physically in our life and not only be detrimental to our health, but it'd be detrimental in the way that we approach life and our quality of life. But if we incorporate laughter into our life, not only is it free, but the benefits will just literally blow your mind. So why should we even care about laughing? What are three types of laughter? How do we determine what's funny? What are lots of ways that you can bring laughter into your life? And if you're an educator, a speaker, a teacher, a leader, pay attention to some of these ideas. <laughs> okay, let's get ready to giggle or chortle or whatever your style of laughing is, because... Hello, hello, hello. You are listening to the No Brainers Empowering Possibilities Show. These are dialogues of encouragement with fresh perspectives, invitations to ahas, a little bit of science, a dash of behavioral psychology, some usable, easy skills that you can try right now here today, and a whole lot of creative fun. So if leveling up is on your radar, my friend, you are at the right show. I'm your host, Roseanne Marsh. I'm the author of the teen and the parent empowerment curriculum called Level Up Empowering Possibilities. And you are listening to episode number 51. If laughter is the best medicine, write yourself a prescription. Christmas Eve this year, I decided that before I went to bed, I was going to make or have raise overnight a cinnamon delight known by my family as monkey bread. So that when we we're hungry in the morning, there'd be something warm, fresh out of the oven, this cinnamon pull apart bread that's made simply from frozen rolls, sugar and cinnamon, lots of melted butter and a box of butterscotch pudding. You've probably made that before, right? Well, I tried a kind of a different way. A friend had said, this is the easiest way to do it. So I rolled and sprinkled and placed in a bunt pan all these yummy ingredients and at the last minute, I placed it on a cookie sheet because I thought, oh, this will make it easier to just put it in the oven in the morning, right? So this was 11 p.m. at night, Christmas Eve. I go to sleep, get up in the morning, 6 a.m., Christmas morning, and I go into the kitchen. I flip on the lights, and all of a sudden, there were giant tennis balls all connected in the goo, but now draped down like a giant cow's udders, <laughs> all this butterscotch gooiness. And thank heavens for the pan, because that thing had risen three times the size of the bent pan. And I was laughing hysterically. Now I could have thought, oh my gosh, I've ruined my family's breakfast. But I think I even got down on one knee and I was laughing so hard. So if you're watching this live, you're seeing the video of the revenge of the dangling doe. But it became the epic fell of the day that brought smiles to friends and family as I shared my felled cooking project. And it really set the tone for, of the day for me. I was happy and I had a smile on my face. I don't think I've chuckled that hard in a long time. So what does your laugh sound like? If someone was describing your laugh, do you chortle? Do you chuckle? Do you cackle? Do you laugh unrestrained? Are you a giggler? A guffaw? A hee-haw? Or a howl? Do you roar with laughter? Do you snort when you laugh? Do you snicker? Or do you titter? Whatever your laugh sounds like to your mind and your body, it is literally music to their ears. So we all need belly laughs and we could all benefit from laughing more every single day. And who doesn't love the laughter of a little kid, right? <laughs> If we could bottle laughter, it could be labeled as benefiting depression, anxiety, 
hopelessness, anger, fear, confusion, pain, creating connection between people. And that list could go on and on. And laughter is free. We don't even have to bottle it. We already have it here. And it's a language that we all speak. It is international. Every single language laughs similarly. And there's even animals that they've identified that laugh. I mean, we know the laughing hyenas, but there's also other animals that their vocalizations, they can tell they're in a sense of humor. Amazing, right? So when science names a psychological study after something, you know, there's got to be something big in the interest of the study of laughter. It's called gelatology. So why are scientists so interested in the study of laughter? Well, it has huge health benefits for the recipients and it uses a lot of the brain and the body. So what does laughing do for us? Laughing exchanges that cortisol that's in our bloodstream with those amazing chemicals, dopamine, oxytocin, and endorphins. And dopamine can improve our attention. It can raise our motivation and it can enhance our learning. Now, who doesn't want that? The oxytocin, that's considered that empathy hormone. And it's kind of an ecstasy hormone too. And when it enters the bloodstream, it increases that feelings of connectedness that we have and that bonding towards others. Endorphins, will they create feelings of pleasure and happiness? In fact, they say that if a person laughs before something happens, they can tolerate 15% more pain than beforehand. That's an interesting study. How do they do that? Laughter reduces that fight or flight reaction it gives us a chance to reappraise things as it decreases our heart rate, our blood pressure, and it helps us relax our muscles. And we're also able to think clearer. After a moment of laughter, we're more creative and we connect better to other people. I had an experience with my friend where we took our boys on a trip to stay in a condominium. And traveling with six boys, there was definitely a sense of humor there. A lot of talk about flatulence, but as we were in the condo, we realized that the toilet mechanism was broken. The handle, it wouldn't flush, inside wasn't connecting. And so we were hands-on trying to connect this so that we would have a toilet. Well, we started laughing so hard at our lack of experience, and we knew we were going to have to go buy some new parts, but we could not stop laughing about our simple ineptness. We could hardly breathe in as we were laughing harder and harder. The guffaws were coming and all six of these boys thought they had lost their mind. But that laughter is contagious. And before we knew it, they were laughing. The entire car was laughing. Now talk about toilet humor, right? But it was funny how funny we thought. And the harder we laughed, the harder we laughed. <laughs> I laugh just thinking about it right now, but it was such a stress reliever. And I think that both of us had so many stressful things happening in our life at that time, that that was the release valve that just took our mood up 10 notches and really set the tone for that entire vacation to really be able to endure six teenage boys and two moms. Now, there's a caveat here. There's a difference in laughter. There's a maniacal <laughs> laugh or a laugh of mean intention that can actually be interpreted by the brain. And the body understands emotions and intent. And the chemicals that are released there are very different than those feel-good, honest, pure humor. And you can't trick the body. Evil or maniacal laughs of revenge, anger, hate, that brings on some crazy juju in your body, if you know what I'm talking about. But laughter can be faked. And the body doesn't know the difference between a spontaneous laugh or a manufactured laugh. Yeah. And the health benefits are still there. We'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. So on a trip I was on with 12 women, I said a tag phrase from an old food commercial. And another person in the group recognized the tagline and started to laugh. 
And as we shared what we knew about this old commercial, we were doubled over in uncontrollable laughter. Well, the group wanted to know why we were laughing so hard. So we found the commercial on the internet and we shared it with the group. But we were breaking up watching this so hard that the group was in stitches. But they later said they they weren't laughing at the commercial. They were laughing at how hard we were laughing at the commercial. Again, that was that stress relief. And even to this day, I feel more connected with this gal because we shared that endorphin, that endorphin laugh, that knowing laugh. It was priceless. And every time we see each other, we say that tagline. In the book of Proverbs from the Bible, it says, a merry heart doeth good like medicine. But researchers are now saying that laughter can do a lot with our ability to cope with life problems and major illnesses. But they're now finding also that laughter brings balance to the components of the immune system. So that helps us fight off diseases and inflammation. Now, this is big since remember, it's free and it's effective. Norman Cousins in 1979 wrote a book. It's called Anatomy of an Illness as Perceived by a Patient. And he was diagnosed with a disease. He was unable to move and in constant pain. However, in the midst of this dire situation, Cousins didn't lose his sense of humor. And he credits his recovery to a prescription of candid camera episodes. If any of you remember those where they catch people doing the funniest things and Marx Brothers movies and funny stories that were read to him by the nurses. So with 10 minutes of laughter, he wrote, he had two hours of pain-free sleep. Now that's big. I've also read of some studies done with veterans of war and their pain due to injuries and needed operations. And they monitored the pain levels and the blood pressures of those watching comedies versus those that were watching downer movies or TV series that were a lot more serious. And they found that two hours of watching laughter series like I Love Lucy reruns and old comedies gave them six hours of pain-free sleep and more blood flow that we know helps with the healing, uh, which helps with the inflammation, which also helps with all the organs. Wow. Pretty cool, wouldn't you say? <laughs> so more benefit of laughing for the body. A hundred laughs is like doing 15 minutes at the gym. So laughing, of course, oxygenates the blood, which helps in healing, but also gives a workout to the abdominal muscles, your respiratory system, your facial muscles, your legs, your backs, and your diaphragm. So that's why sometimes you're often just exhausted after a bout of laughter because you've literally been put through an aerobic workout, right? It's also been said that laughing 15 minutes is equivalent to two hours of sleep. So let's see. If I laugh for an hour straight, does that mean I have to go to bed? <laughs> there was a meme that said, I want to laugh every day so that the wrinkles of my old age are in the right place. Right? This is big. State change is a huge tool in your toolkit. So what are the three reasons we laugh? Well, one, we're caught off guard by something. It's also called incongruity theory. That's when humor rises when logical and the familiar are replaced by things that don't normally go together. Researcher Thomas Vetch says that a joke becomes funny when we expect one outcome and another one happens. When a joke begins, our minds and our bodies, they're already anticipate what's going to happen and how it's going to end. And that anticipation or that expectation takes the form of a logical thought that's entwined with emotion. And then it's influenced by past experiences and our thought processes. So our mind is always going, already going a certain way. And when the joke goes in an unexpected turn, an unexpected direction, our thoughts and emotions suddenly have to switch gears. And we now have new emotions backing up a different line of thought, or in other words, 
we experience two sets of incompatible thoughts and emotions simultaneously. We experience this incongruity between the different parts of the joke as humorous. That's the science piece of it, right? What should be logical is thrown for a shift and our body is flooded with a hormone called catecholamines, which in turn release those happy hormones in our body that our body and our minds crave, those endorphins. And with each laugh, we experience less stress, less anxiety, more levity, more ability to think clear and more creativity because we have created that jump out of that static thought that we were in. So all to say that first reason we laugh is we laugh because we're caught off guard in an oxymoron type of way. So how do we determine what's funny? It has to do with our development and usually what relates to our life. Infants and children are constantly trying to discover the world around them. It's a time of body awareness function and simple surprises like a character falling down or getting hurt or toilet humor is what really makes toddlers and, and little ones, infants and children laugh. Teens, whereas they developmentally, now it's into relationships and sexuality and nuances there. They laugh at those. And adults, because of the development of the frontal cortex, it's the play on words, the double entendres, the clever nuances. But yeah, we also go into the relationships, the sexuality, the toilet humor, the falling down, right? We can always go down, but we have a hierarchy of the more developmental we are in our mind, the more we can catch those plays on words, et cetera. So we laugh when we're caught off guard and we get the connection of the humor. The second is we laugh because we seek out the laughs. We know what can make us laugh and we hang around those that make us laugh. I have some friends who, who when they laugh, I laugh. And there is no joke involved, but just hearing their laugh makes me happy and laugh. A part of this is also seeing the humor in our situations that are hard and stressful. What humor can we find? Can we laugh at our mistake that we made? Can we laugh at something difficult we are doing and make light of the stress? Not in a disrespectful way, but sometimes we just need to lighten up. So first we get caught off guard and we get the humor of something or second, we go out and we search for ways to find humor. And the third reason we laugh is we recognize the value of laughing to our mind, etc. And so we simulate laughing. We start out fake laughing to move us into real laughing. Now, this is what's amazing. The body and the mind do not discriminate whether it's a fake laugh or it's a real laugh. So if you fake your laugh, after a small amount of time, it's gonna start moving you into a real laugh. And no jokes needed to be made and nothing funny had to be connected. It's just that laughter does those beneficial things for your body and your body doesn't even have to make a connection to a joke. So we're either something is funny and we get the connection or we search out those things that are funny or the people are funny, or we just fake laugh. So how can we bring laughter into our life? I hope I've convinced you that it's a miracle. And in a world that's hard to find things that really are helpful, laughter is an amazing way to really elevate our lives. It doesn't mean it's going to change our lives, but it's going to help us be able to cope with those difficult things that we have going on and finding the humor in some of our situations when appropriate. So the first thing is let's figure out what makes us laugh and do more of that more often, whether it's something you watch, whether it's something you read, whether it's someone you hang out with. So here's a list of my laughter go-tos, ways that we can bring laughter into our life. Okay, the first is passing on and receiving those funny memes. That's an amazing tool where a picture is worth a thousand words. And then add to that, it's got this funny little tagline that just pulls that whole thing in. I just received a meme from a friend who had her first baby. And the meme has a picture of a mother in labor. And the tagline says, during labor, 
the pain is so great that a woman dot, dot, dot can almost imagine what a man feels like when he has a fever. <laughs> now, humor shouldn't be at the expense of singling out a person or in poor taste, but we can appreciate some of the general chuckles that they bring. There's also a meme I just saw of a cute little toddler smiling coyly at the camera. And the meme says, silence is golden, dot, 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 unless you have a toddler. In that case, silence is very, very suspicious. <laughs> so memes is a way of bringing laughter into your life. Another is video shorts on many platforms, the Reels, the TikTok on YouTube. If you have a few minutes and wanted to relate to your teens, watch with them Epic Fells videos. Now it's crazy. We laugh at people that are falling in water or on their head or slipping on the dance floor, but it's a sure way to bring laughter and a sense of, oh, how did they survive that? I mean, I don't appreciate when people laugh when I fall, but I usually can see the humor in the situation. So what funny videos can you watch with your kids to laugh and connect together? Movies are the best. Comic movies are a great enhancer of mood. When I was thinking of my favorites, the list was immense. And remember, what's funny to one person, what's funny to me could put another person to sleep. So before I list a few of mine, what are your favorite comic movies? What is the funniest movie you have ever seen? Quick, shout it out really fast. And watch it sometime again soon or revisit those parts that make you laugh. And I even thought, wouldn't it be a great idea if we just took little videos of our favorite scenes from those funny movies so that we would have our little laughter playlist that we could turn on any time that we need to start laughing. So here are some of mine. And do you have your favorite one-liners from movies? Whenever we go to movies, we always figure out what's the one-liner that we take away. So here goes just a few of mine. I love British humor, and this one is better when you're tired, but Monty Python and the Holy Grail. I love when they're talking about bring out your dead. <laughs> or Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Bueller. 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 <laughs> or The Jerk with Steve Martin. The phone book is here. The phone book is here. The phone book is here. <laughs> okay. These are older movies that I'm listing and you're just going to have to <laughs> go watch them if you want to understand it. But The Princess Bride, uh, one of the one-liners I remember is love, true love, when they're talking about love. Anyway, The Grumpy Old Men, Mrs. Doubtfire, Planes, Trains, and Automobiles, Meet the Parents with Robert De Niro. Vacation with Chevy Chase, Groundhog Day with Bill Murray, Mrs. Doubtfire with Robin Williams, Mr. Mom. And here's one you probably have not even heard of. Most people have it called Multiplicity. Is This guy's business is a construction company and he's struggling to make time for his family and his demanding job. A scientist offers to clone him, which I think is a great idea. And Doug accepts and he's creates a more macho version of himself. And then he decides to clone a second one. And when that one decides that he's overwhelmed, they on their own decide to duplicate another clone. And it just gets more and more less intelligent as it goes. And the complications of keeping the clones from his wife is just funny. So, but comic relief gives us the ability to release and, and let go of our tensions. And the more we laugh in those deep belly laughs, the more the body is engaged. Now, here's a secret weapon used by Hollywood. And this isn't with the comic movies, but this is with the more serious, suspenseful ones. Humor is always juxtaposition and in the right place, even in the drama of high tense movies, periodically a one liner will be added right when things are super intense. And this is strategic because it gives our body a release so that when they continually build, we can handle the intensity of the movie. Is that incredible? 
So if people don't think there's a lot of psychology that goes into movies, they have not figured out the master influence of the movie industry. So from the music to the wording, to the timing, to the movie score, to even the items actors are using. And yes, some industries and companies pay to have their products on the set. So let's take a cue from the movie industry. They know that in times of intensity, we need a release. So can't we use laughter on those tense, stressful times in our life to allow us to have that escape valve, have that release so that we can handle things more appropriately? What movies make you laugh? Now, theater. I love live theater and would pick that over movie theater any day. There is a theater near me called Off-Broadway, and I've frequented a lot in the past. They have parodies on well-known movies and shows. And the first one I think I saw was Star Trek with all the plays on words. And their upcoming season even has Indianapolis Jones and other parodies. But some of my plays on Broadway that I have loved are Noises Off. And this is a hilarious comedy that pokes fun and provides a backstage insight into what happens during the scenes of a play. The first part, you see the play from the front side and you see all the actors coming in and out. The second half, you see what's going on behind the scenes and the craziness and whether the show needs to go on. Literally, you may be able to already find these on YouTube or I believe they've made movies out of some of these, but another one to see how they run. This is another fast one. It's a one stage play. It's British comedy and it's about mistaken identity it takes place in one scene. It's at a vicarage. And when the victor is getting ready for his Sunday sermon and leaves periodically, visitors come, people get knocked out. There's running around chasing their spies that enter into it. It's so action packed and it's so funny. Now, my all-time favorite comedy theater is Nun Sense, like N-U-N. It's a hilarious spoof on a misadventure of five nuns who are trying to raise, who are trying to run a fundraiser. I can't stop smiling when I think about it. They're having a fundraiser to raise money to bury their sisters that passed away from food poisoning prepared by Sister Julia Child of God. So they have this talent show. That is outrageously funny. These are some feel-good theater plays you have just got to see. Now, another way to bring that comedy and that laughter into your life is improv or comedy shows. I like the clean versions, and it's so fun to see the quick wit that has been developed in these actors. We could all use some schooling and developing a better sense of humor. So who is your comedian that speaks to you? I like those that make fun of themselves versus making fun of other people. So the first is go out there and find things that are funny. And I just listed a bunch of ways that you can do that. Now, the second way of bringing laughter into your life is create your own laughter therapy or just laughing. Yep, I'm talking about fake laughing. And it, it will feel fake at first, and then it will move into the real thing. I was in Mexico at a medical facility to do some training as a health coach. And while we were there eating these clean, pure foods, wearing 100% cotton on the cliffs over the ocean that had pure air, the psychologist was teaching us uh, some of the courses and he invited us to a class on the stage of the facility. So he's putting us through a therapy session that day. And we had no idea what he was doing. So he started out by doing some stretching exercises. And then he asked us to follow his lead. And he said, we're going to do a warm up and I want you to clap. I want you to go ho, ho, ha, 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 ho, ho, ha, 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 ho, ho, ha, 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 and then laugh. <laughs> so we were supposed to walk around going ho, ho, ha, ha, ha. Oh, oh, ha, ha, ha. And looking others in the eyes, we started to smile and then we were laughing. And then the next exercise, I was totally uncomfortable, but we were all troopers because he had asked us to put our index finger on our nose and push it up to look like a little pig. And then we walked around 
looking at each other going, I tell you, as we were looking in the eyes of people with their nose up like a little porky pig, I tell you, we were laughing and chuckling. Well, this was laughter therapy. And we went through lots of different ways to copy or do things or add something in. And we were laughing the entire time. So laughter therapy is one way to bring the miracles that laughter can bring into your life by creating a way to to have that release valve for the pent up emotions, anger, frustration, disappointment, rejection, and it goes on and on with those things that we bottle up that literally are waiting to be released. So many communities have laughter yoga, and that's aimed at doing breathing exercises that simulate joy, then bringing out the child and the play in you, and then moving you into the laughter and that upswing in mood that really catapults you to have that positive day. So we're just going to try something here. I want you, since some of you may be driving while you're listening to this, you can still participate. And for those of you who aren't driving, I want you to pretend like you're driving. And I want you to remember something funny. We're going to start out with a closed mouth, kind of a giggle. Then I want to move to a chuckle. And then I want you to look around and notice the people in the cars next to you watching you laugh. And they start laughing. And you're laughing at them laughing. And we're just going to laugh out loud for a second. Okay, you ready? Okay, here we go. We're driving along. Remember something funny. I'm, I'm going to remember my dangling dough dongles from my cinnamon bread. <laughs> oh. and on but try that with your family just try getting that endorphin rush that comes from juggling you'll notice that you'll engage those stomach abdomen muscles there's more than one way to get a six-pack right but as educators teachers leaders how are you incorporating laughter in your teaching your students will be more engaged they'll have clear thinking they'll be more creative if first they're exposed to some good old laughing. Oh, and there are lots of ways that you engage your students. So have a look at leveluptteen.com forward slash learn more to to find an engaging experiential course for empowering your teen and the teen and all of us. Hey, laughter relaxes the whole body. Laughter is good for your health. Laughter boosts your immune system. Laughter triggers the release of endorphins. Laughter protects the heart. Laughter burns calories. Laughter lightens anger's heavy load. Laughter may even help you live longer. So laugh with friends or search out what makes you laugh or fake it until you make it. So laughter is the best medicine. So write yourself a prescription. We are creators and we create the life we want. Until next week, tally ho. And... Keep laughing.